Good evening and welcome to Evening Worship from St Peter's Shipley Online. Um, it is the week after Pentecost Sunday, so it's Trinity Sunday today, the day when we particularly remember God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, the three in one. We're also starting a new teaching series today. Over the next few weeks, um, we're going to be thinking in our evening services and also in Rachel's uh, morning worship times um, about the Lord's Prayer. Uh, and John is going to be starting a series helping us to think through a bit more uh, that prayer line by line uh, and what that means for all of us. So as we come into worship, let's have a moment of quiet. And as we gather, we pray together. We are drawn to your feet in worship, your creation facing its creator, hearts laid bare by your light, humbly asking for your mercy. We come to you as a people in need of assurance and forgiveness. We come to you as a people in need of healing and wholeness. We come dependent on your love. Draw us close, enfold us in your arms, fill us with your spirit that we might reflect your light within this dark world. Speak your word with boldness and draw others to your feet. We ask this through your dear Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. God of spring's warmth, April showers, waking life, we praise your holy name. God of summer sun, warming earth, sprouting seed, we praise your holy name. God of summer pasture and mountain stream, we praise your holy name. God of root and shoot, of harvest to come. We praise your holy name. All creation is an expression of your creativity and more importantly of yourself, Father. As an artist might share his personality with each brush stroke, so within the myriad colours of a butterfly's wing, you share the exuberance of your love. That we can glimpse you within creation is a beautiful thought, but also tells us that you desire to be seen, to be found and known. Open our eyes, Lord. As we walk through this world, feel the wind and sunshine, see the majesty of creation unfolding before our eyes, help us to see you. Thank you. 
we come now to our time of confession and penitence, the time to lay before God the things that we want to confess to him tonight. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, three in one. Amen. In the light of God's glory, our hearts lie exposed, revealing the sin within. If we in humility will confess our sins in the quietness of our hearts or in the company of the faithful, God's love and mercy bring forgiveness. And a moment of quiet to bring our personal confessions before God. And we pray together. For that which we ought to have done to bring a blessing or word in due season, forgive us, gracious Lord. For that which we have already done, which has caused a wound or moved someone to anger, forgive us, gracious Lord. Amen. May these be lives that are devoted to serving you and all whom you would lead us to. Amen. We pray together. May our days be days of hope, of expectation, relishing each moment as a gift from you. May our days be days of freedom, of breaking free, loosening the chains that still surround us. May our days be days of peace, of wholeness, knowing that our lives are in your hands. May our days be days of joy, of blessing, living in your kingdom as children of God. Amen. Today's Old Testament reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 64, beginning to read at verse 1. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you. As when fire sets twigs ablaze and causes water to boil, come down to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. For when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down and the mountains trembled before you. Since ancient times no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. You come to the help of those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. But when we continue to sin against them, you are angry. How then can we be saved? All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf, and like the wind our sins sweep us away. No one calls on your name, or strives to lay hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us, and have given us over to our sins. Yet you, Lord, are our Father. We are the clay, you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be, ang do not be angry beyond measure, Lord. Do not remember our sins for ever. O oh, look upon us and as we pray, for we are all your people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved the wretch. Like me, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear. My fears relieved How precious did that grace appear The hour I first believed Through many dangers toil 
Testament reading is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 6, beginning to read verse 5, concerning prayer. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room, shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. When you're praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors and do not bring us to the time of trial but rescue us from the evil one. For if you forgive others their trespasses your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. At a very early point in his ministry, Jesus teaches his followers to say the Lord's Prayer. He teaches them to address God as Father in the same way that he did. And so this prayer is indeed his prayer, our Lord's Prayer. But the idea of calling God Father isn't a New Testament idea. It goes much further back than that. The first reference that I can find in the Old Testament to the idea of God as a Father comes in the book of Exodus when God sends Moses back to Egypt to tell Pharaoh to let his people go. And in that passage in Exodus chapter 4, he says to Moses, Israel is my firstborn son. He talks about the nation of Israel having a family relationship with him. It's not a relationship of slaves with a master, but Israel is my firstborn son. And this idea does crop up again in the Old Testament. We find it in the Psalms. And we find it in the prophet Isaiah in particular, uh, in the prophecies uh, to the nation in exile. This idea of the firstborn son, of course, looks forward to the coming of Jesus, the Son of God. And beyond that, to the idea of the church as God's people. And so we find the idea of God being our father in many different parts of the Bible. It's a very common idea. In the Holy Communion service in the Book of Common Prayer, 
The Lord's Prayer is said twice, once near the beginning and once near the end. And on one of those occasions, there is a preamble, some words that are said beforehand, which uh, go, as our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, our Father who art in heaven, and so on. We're exhorted by the Book of Common Prayer to say this prayer boldly. There is an idea in there that it's almost a very cheeky thing to do, to come and to say these things to God and to ask him for these things. And <clears throat> we're right to come into God's presence boldly. And we are blessed with so many things that we can ask God when we have no right to ask him those things. I remember uh, from my childhood um, one occasion where my younger brother decided that uh, one day he was going to pretend to be me and he dressed up in my clothes and put my shoes on and he tried to convince our mother that uh, he was me and my mother went along with this for a little while although she had rumbled him straight away and I think that the picture that the Book of Common Prayer is trying to draw is something like that. That we come saying this prayer, which is really that of our older brother Jesus. And we are pretending, in a sense, to be him. And it's certainly the case that in the Book of Hebrews, Jesus is referred to as our older brother. And perhaps we find when we try to walk in his shoes in many ways uh, that perhaps it's not as straightforward as we thought in the same way as my brother discovered that my clothes didn't fit him and my shoes didn't either. But even so, <clears throat> God wants us to be that bold when we come to him and to regard Jesus as our older brother uh, we have that privilege of becoming part of God's family in that way. So when we come to consider this idea of God as Father, I think there are probably two issues here, which as Christians, uh, many of us do struggle with from time to time. The first is this idea of being worthy of coming into the presence of God at all. How can we, as sinful human beings, possibly be worthy of receiving God's favour in any way? Because we come into the presence of a holy God, who in that sense is not like us. And the prayer asks us to pray, um, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, holy is your name, to acknowledge that the God into whose presence we come is indeed a holy God. How can we be worthy of receiving all the benefits of being his children? Well, <clears throat> the Gospel in the, the New Testament, of course, tells us that that is exactly what has happened, that we who deserve nothing from God have actually been uh, brought into his presence and can live uh, as if we were his children. And the response to the idea that we are not worthy uh, of receiving anything at the hands of our God is that, well, it would be very difficult, in fact impossible, to find any Christian who was worthy of having that status before God. And it doesn't matter whether we feel like we're worthy of it or not. We have had our sins forgiven through all that Jesus has done. And we become uh, what the book of Romans calls heirs of God and co-heirs with Jesus Christ. I think that it takes some Christians a little time 
to understand the unconditional love of God. And I think that perhaps for myself, that was a process that happened, that when I first became a Christian, the idea that God loved me was a piece of head knowledge, which needed over time to drop down into my heart so that I truly knew that that was the case. And I think that actually that happened quite quickly for me at a certain point in my life. But uh, I was conscious of, uh, of, of that difference and prayed that I might know the love of God truly in my heart. And I think that that's something which God uh, was in his love and grace prepared to give to me and to all of us who desire to love and follow him. But then there's another thing which I think for some Christians can be a real problem which is the idea of, of God being a parent figure, a father to us. And whilst all of us have had fathers, the quality of fathering that we have received is very different from person to person. And sadly, it is true that there are a great many people who have had a very difficult and sometimes a non-existent relationship with an earthly father. And because we learn about what parenthood is in the context of our own families, for some people that is a real deficit which needs to be addressed. They've perhaps grown up without a father at all or only knowing a father who was distant or absent or in the worst cases, cruel, violent and abusive. How can we deal with that issue? Now, <clears throat> In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus asks us all to address God as our Father. And I think, therefore, that we must read into that a call from Jesus himself to enter into a relationship with a Father who is perfect and to be healed of the things which we may have experienced in our earthly lives, which have served to turn us off that and to turn us away from that, to lead us perhaps to believe that God is not who he says he is. And the Lord's Prayer therefore challenges us to come to someone who can be to us a perfect father, who can heal us of the damage that has been caused in our earthly lives, and to be someone who we can truly call a heavenly father who is all those things to us which perhaps we have missed in our earthly experience. So as we begin to study the Lord's Prayer and to see that Jesus asks all of his followers to call God Father, we have those three challenges. First of all, that call to intimacy, to know that uh, this is not a servant-vassal relationship at all, uh, but that we are called into a family where the warmth of relationships is real. That we are challenged to be bold in the way that we pray, to accept, yes, that we uh, in our natural state are not worthy of anything from God, but can come to him to ask for all that we need. And thirdly, if there has been damage in our lives in the past, to receive healing at God's hand from those things and to come into all the fullness that God offers us.
here on earth, just as in heaven above. Let your will be done. Wake our hearts and let your kingdom come. We are watching. We We come to our time of intercession, so let's pray together. God of renewal, of life and death, rebirth, renew our hearts and minds. We pray for our homes, families, friends and all whom we love. Especially at this time when we are spending most of our time there, we thank you for our homes and for the protection and the security they offer. We pray especially for those who have no permanent home at this time and for all those who work to help and support them. We thank you for our families and we ask you to especially be with those who have found lockdown particularly difficult because their homes are not happy places for whatever reason. As we begin to be able to see our families and friends again, even in a limited way, Father, remind us of these days when we have missed spending time with them and help us to continue to be grateful for their presence and not to take them for granted. We pray for those whose time is spent caring for others, whether someone they live with or those in the caring professions. Protect and guard especially those who are at extra risk at this time as a result. We pray for those we know who are in any kind of need. Those who are ill in body, mind or spirit. Those who are close to death and all who watch and wait with them. And all who grieve the loss of someone they cared for. In a moment of quiet now, call to mind anyone that you know particularly. Lord, draw close and bring healing, comfort and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of promise, of all beginnings and endings, renew our hearts and minds. We pray for your church around the world at this time, for all bishops and leaders of all kinds, for your wisdom as they seek to lead your people through these unprecedented days and to continue to speak your truth in the communities they serve. We pray for the worship of the church in these times, that we will see this as an opportunity to be living sacrifices in the community in which we live, and so to bring glory to you and to draw others to seek and find you for themselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, of new growth and harvest, renew our hearts and minds. We pray for those who have lost hope at this time whether because of their personal circumstances, damaged businesses, lost employment, sickness and poor health, or for bigger reasons, those who are afraid of life after lockdown, 
fractured communities and those who feel oppressed and unfairly treated. Lord, bring your hope and your peace that passes all human understanding. We pray for the leaders of the nations, that they will seek your guidance and your wisdom in their decision making, especially as they respond to the issues which have surfaced around the world as a result of the death of George Floyd in the USA. As we have remembered the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, we pray that your spirit will come again and the fruits of your spirit will be abundant in our communities. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness and self-control. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bless you, God of seed time and of harvest, and we bless each other, that the beauty of this world and the love that created it might be expressed through our lives and be a blessing to others, now and always. Amen. And the collect for today, Trinity Sunday. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given your servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith that we may evermore be defended from all adversities. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit descended and was given so that the good news could be shared. And on that day, it was shared by a handful, but to multitudes, and they all received this wonderful good news in their own language. And so now, as we recite the prayer that our Lord himself has taught us, I encourage you to join me, but to recite it in the language of your choice. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory of the Lord. Now and for Amen.
And so as we draw our service to a close, we pray together. As one day draws to a close and heralds in dawn's fresh light, may the blessing our hearts have received be the blessing our hearts proclaim at the moment we wake. Now may the God of love keep us safe in his arms, the God of peace bring us to sweet rest, and the God of joy let us wake refreshed. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.